In this video, I will describe the difference between special relativity and general relativity. A special relativity is a subset of general relativity, where general relativity is the ultimate theory of gravity. Special relativity does not take gravity into consideration, but describes the motion of very fast moving objects with speeds comparable to the speed of light. I really hope that you've had some introductory physics courses because it is an experience that must be done at least once in your life. The problem though is that those equations that they teach you are actually wrong. Those equations are extremely useful and they're probably all that you will ever need. But they're only approximations when traveling at slow speeds. Slow compared to the speed of light. But why are they wrong? All the equations of Newtonian mechanics were derived based on two fundamental assumptions called postulates in physics. The first one states that the laws of physics must be the same for any frame of reference which is not subject to a net force. If this principle were not true, there wouldn't be any way to study physics because every frame of reference would have its own set of laws. The second postulate is that time and space are measured equivalently in all reference frames. This seems natural, right? One foot or one second in my reference frame shouldn't be any different from a foot or a second in any other reference frame. The second postulate is false and has been replaced by the constant speed of light in vacuum. At first, this may seem quite odd and it has puzzled physicists for decades. How does this all work? Now, let's pretend that you're sitting on a bench at a train station and a train passes by at a constant speed. You have a watch and you would expect that your watch and the watch of another passenger on the train would tick at the same interval, right? This is what Newtonian mechanics says, and this is common intuition. Well, it turns out that if that train was traveling at speeds comparable to the speed of light, that wouldn't be true anymore. And that is an example of special relativity. This is the relation that describes what you would expect. Delta T is your clock time interval, and delta T prime is the clock time interval of the person on the train, and they're the same. Now, if the train travels at, say, 0.8 times the speed of light, things do change. You see that this equation is completely consistent with the equation shown previously. In fact, for very small speeds v compared to the speed of light, the denominator is basically 1. Now, if the speed of the train is 0.8 times the speed of light c, we see that the denominator actually equals 0.6. This means that your clock travels 1.6666 times faster than the clock of the person on the train. This was just a glimpse of the wonders of special relativity. But wait until we get into the realm of general relativity, which is the ultimate theory of gravity. Special relativity works only locally, when gravitational effects can be neglected. But in fact, massive bodies are capable of bending space-time itself. And this phenomenon is described within general relativity. You might be wondering, does any of this matter in real life? In fact, it does. One of the best examples is the Global Positioning System, better known as GPS. Pretend that you're somewhere in Chicago. After corrections for both special 
and general relativity, the GPS will accurately predict your position. If you ignore these corrections for about a week, the GPS will predict your position to be far north of Chicago, around Lake Michigan, 5,000 meters above the water. I hope that you now have a better appreciation of the difference between special relativity and general relativity and their importance in our daily life. Thanks for watching.